What is going on everybody? And welcome finally to the second ROG Ally Power Saver and Performance Guide. It has been a long time coming, and for the most part, I've been testing out these specific games in this list throughout my entire time owning an ROG Ally. And before we get started, to save the most battery possible, make sure your brightness is half or 75%. And if you're playing single player titles, just make sure your Wi-Fi is turned off as well as your Bluetooth. If you're not using headphones, or an external controller for tabletop gameplay. And for every game on this list, all of these games were tested in silent mode, and to get the best performance and battery life possible, make sure to switch your VRAM to either auto or four gigabytes. This will give you a huge performance boost in silent mode, while switching to eight gigabytes will give you more room for high fidelity graphics. But eight gigabytes is more recommended if you're playing docked, while the four gigabyte option is ideal for most situations, especially silent mode. And also with every game on the list, it should be noted that V-Sync will be turned off and 120 Hertz mode enabled to use variable refresh rates. And if you're coming from the last power saver and performance guide, there are initial settings to help performance that could be considered risky. But if you do want to know everything in your power to save as much battery life as possible, maybe you want to check out the first power saver and performance guide for the ROG Ally. And I'll provide a link down below. But opposed to the first fix that I provided in the first performance guide, here's a new fix specifically to fix audio crackling that occurs with low TDP modes like silent mode on your ROG Ally. First, you have to go to the search bar in Windows and type mmsys.cpl to open Windows 11 sound settings. Select the main speakers, go to properties, and turn off spatial sound because it seems like this specific sound setting is power intensive for the RG Ally. So turn it off will also save a bit of power, but you won't get that surround sound like effect with the speakers. But this is only if the crackling is occurring for you with speakers or headphones. And if the sound crackling is occurring with your headphones, you just have to follow the same steps and go to your headphone settings properties and turn off spatial sound with your headphones it seems to be some kind of glitch in silent mode with dolby atmos there are other ways to fix this like uninstalling and reinstalling your rg allies audio drivers but that's a little bit on the risky side i heard that helps some people i've been looking on reddit for a little while and the temporary fix that you can just switch back on whenever you go back into performance or turbo is just turning off spatial sound but with that said and with that fix hopefully noted on your side, let's start the Power Saver and Performance Guide list. So the first game on the list is one of my favorite racing games and open world racing games at that, and it is Fuel. Now, Fuel is one of the biggest racing games with over 5,000 square miles in its multi-routed and sectioned off map, and it's 5,560 square miles to be exact. But besides the staggering amount of content and open world space in Fuel, in silent mode, 1080p with 40 to 60 FPS, you'll get around four hours of gameplay. An incredible amount with the amount of content and how big the map is in this title. If you haven't tried Fuel, it's kind of hard to spot on Steam. I don't think they're selling it anymore, but there are third party versions that you can get and play offline on the go on your RG Ally. And you would get about four hours at 1080p mode, but at 720, you can reach four hours and 45 minutes to even five five hours with this title at steady FPS. With 720p, you will get a guaranteed 60 FPS. And that's of course, everything at high settings with of course, V-Sync off. And the variable refresh rate helps this game run even smoother since it's going from 40 to 60 FPS constantly, depending on how big the area is that you're traversing through. And the next game on the list is one of my favorites. It's kind of a strange one, but it's by Suda51. Now this is one of my top directors in video game history. And he's someone that made some of the most iconic franchises and characters known to the industry. And this game is Killer is Dead. Now, this is one of Suda51's newer titles for the PS3, but he doesn't make too many AAA type games. So seeing Killer is Dead and how incredibly awesome it looks with its art style, characters and level design, this definitely has a lot of Suda51's personality in it. And at 1080p, 30 to 60 FPS, depending on if you mess with the settings to get 60 FPS or higher, 
I managed to get three hours and 20 minutes with this title on, of course, silent mode. And sometimes the FPS would even hit 70 in silent mode and still last about three hours. But if you want to limit the FPS to 60 so you'll get more time out of this game, I highly recommend that as well. And at 720p with, of course, default to high settings, you'll get about four hours with Killer is Dead. And just to reiterate, make sure your brightness is set to 50 or 75 percent, your Wi-Fi turned off and your Bluetooth turned off if you're not using it. That helps to save a ton of battery and for each setting you turn off you save about 10 minutes so you get an extra at least 30 minutes of game time with killer is dead and this game has all sorts of twists and turns and unusually satisfying bosses to the point i just get sucked into this game and play for the full three hours by mistake but if you haven't checked out killer is dead already it is sort of a niche title so being able to play this game at full resolution full fps for three hours straight minimum on the go is a dream come true especially for me. Now the next title is a game I've been talking about for a while. It's another racing game, an open world one. If you guessed it, it's Forza Horizon 4. With this title at 1080p, 40 to 60 FPS, but a seamless transition between those frames thanks to VRR, you'll be able to get minimum 2 hours and 45 minutes at 1080p, 60 FPS. I don't know how they did it, but there are some settings you should know about. All you have to do is make sure dynamic optimization is turned on and dynamic render quality quality is set to high. If you make sure those settings are set in that certain way, then you will get the best FPS and with the highest resolution. And just for shits and giggles, at 720p, 60 FPS, I managed to get Forza Horizon 4 to last three hours minimum. So it sometimes lasted three hours and 20 minutes, depending what kind of area you're in, and make sure always to set the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth off if you're not playing online. Now, I was offline because I was playing the offline mode of this game, because at the end of the day, I was just tired of signing into Xbox and Microsoft accounts over and over again every time I wanted to play this title. And there are other issues with the base scene version, but for the most part, you will get the same exact battery life if you are playing either a third party version or the scene version. Now for this next title, it was a big hitter with the Nintendo Switch with a surprise release, and that is Outlast 1, including the Whistleblower DLC. With this title at 1080p, 60 FPS, of course, I managed to get a staggering four hours and four 40 minutes with Outlast 1 on high settings and everything else was default. So if you even want to play a game like Outlast 1, any kind of horror game that's as intense as it, for almost five freaking hours, that's all up to you. Outlast is a horror game, so I'm not sure how long a person wants to play a game as scary as Outlast, but you can get almost five hours with this game, probably a full five hours if you set the game settings to medium or even low, or possibly if you turn down the resolution to 720p. Now, respectively, the next game has to be Outlast 2. Unfortunately, this game did not include DLC. Not sure why the hell not. But anyway, at 1080p, 60 FPS, you can get three hours and 20 minutes with Outlast 2 on high settings. And again, everything else default. But that makes me think, would I want to play a game as advanced as Outlast 2 for more than three hours? Probably not. Now, don't get me wrong. I love these games. But after a while, you just kind of get tired of being scary. So three hours for two games as scary as these is kind of ridiculous. Now the next game on the list is Sniper Elite 4. At 1080p 30 FPS, I managed to get two hours and 40 minutes with this game. And that's with medium settings, motion blur turned off, and draw distance at low. Now even with those settings and tweaks to this title, at 1080p this game doesn't play as good as I wanted it to. So setting it to 720p medium settings with of course the draw distance set to low and motion blur off, you'll get a good three hours out of Sniper Elite 4. And for the most part, this game isn't really that remarkable on silent mode on the RG Ally. So I guess this is one of the finer examples that silent mode still needs to be tweaked a little more because playing a game as precise as a Sniper Elite game at any FPS lower than 60 is kind of cringe in my opinion. It's kind of like the Nintendo Switch version that was in 30 FPS 720p. But I do recommend playing Sniper Elite 4 in performance mode. You get a solid two hours or maybe even an hour and 45 minutes and the FPS can easily reach 
1060 at 1080p. Now, the next and last game is one of my favorites. It's a game I've been tinkering with for the past two years. And for the most part, I've been trying to get an offline version of Ghost Recon Wildlands because I hate signing into Ubisoft Launcher in order to play something that I bought on Steam. And Wildlands is a little tricky. At 1080p, 30 FPS, you get two hours and 40 minutes, but that's with low settings. So I don't really recommend playing this game if you have to set it to 1080p at low settings. If you're gonna go to 1080p medium or high settings, look so much better. So I do recommend playing this game if you're going to go to 1080p in performance mode. But if you somehow need to save a lot of battery, I do recommend going to 720p medium settings because if you set it to medium the game will look a lot better you can see a lot more important details that you would if you just take away everything in low settings now i couldn't help but turn on the shadows when i set it to low at 1080p because in low settings all the shadows are just gone but at 720p 30 fps you'll get about three hours with this title so it's not too bad but honestly this is also one of the games that i would recommend playing in performance mode and not in silent mode just yet there doesn't seem to be any sure way to make Wildlands last a long time and look just as good as the console version. For now, Performance or even Turbo are the best options for Wildlands if you want to play it the most optimal way. But yeah, there will be games that I run into that just aren't serviceable in silent mode, like Wildlands and Sniper Elite 4. Those games are a lot more graphically intensive, so you're not going to have as much luck with games that require you to be precise. But yeah, if there are any other games you want me to check out to see what the best power saver and performance options are let me know in the comments but yeah there are a lot more power saver and performance guides coming for the rog ally that i have in the works right now and i'm really not quite sure why a lot of other people don't do these kind of lists maybe it's because they don't want to get sued by me but i don't really care if you come out with a good power saver and performance guide that'll help me as well as everyone else i'm making these to more help myself to keep a list online forever and of course in my notes so i know which games work best with the RG Ally, especially if I'm in some kind of situation like being at an airport, if I'm stuck somewhere without an outlet, I would want to know what the most recommended settings, power modes, and just overall options are to play the longest amount of time on my RG Ally with my favorite titles. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a good one. Later.